Be willful. One of the traits that sets apart successful network marketers from those who are not is being willful. A willful network marketer is the one who is deliberate, intentional, conscious and directed towards achieving a set goal. In 2020 alone, I achieved so many goals than in any other time as a network marketer. In 2020, I raised nine direct managers, moved positions from a senior manager to a sapphire manager. Part of the reasons I got so much growth in my business was the fact that I decided to be willful. And I am happy that this is one of our company's themes this year. As an intentional FBO who had huge goals to hit in 2020, I had the following facts to run by. Invest in your business. A network marketing business, like any other businesses, require one to invest his or her resources in it. Time and capital are the resources I had put into my business. For the entire three years that I had in Forever Living, I had invested hundreds of hours into my business. I sacrificed my weekends and spent time with different teams that I had in different places. And all these paid off big time in 2020 when I produced managers from the teams that I frequently visited. Delayed gratification always wins. Team incentives played a big role in team growth. There was a time where I would promote such lucrative incentives like international travel and some dedicated downlines worked so hard to claim these big incentives because I wanted to win because I had a goal to push. This kind of incentives came in so handy and helped in reaching my 2020 goals. If I wasn't self-willed, I would definitely hold back some of these activities and have a stagnant business. So if it works, go for it. Find what ticks with your current team. If they love adventure like the team I had in 2020, throw such kind of an incentive and win. Retention remains the X factor in network marketing. Experience has taught me that team retention is everything in our industry and thus I had made it a norm that the first quarter of every year I do intense trainings in different places. Because we would have recruited a whole lot of people who are not familiar with this industry during the year, arranging trainings per category had always brought great results. I would collaborate with managers in my team and would pull trainings to impart skills, tools and give working tips to assistant supervisors, supervisors and managers. With a whole lot of empowered downlines, it became quite easy to pull through with these self-driven individuals and smash the set goals. I must admit, I'm not so good with recruiting, but with the few people that I have recruited over the months, I do my best to retain them. And in fact, you don't need to run with the entire world, but simply a few individuals who are as hungry as you are. To me, team members come before money. I am human first before business. Sometimes I pay courtesy calls and not discuss business. Sometimes I am available to team members as a friend, as a parent, or as a sister. And when you have established this kind of relationship with your team members, it becomes quite easy to work together and have great growth in your team. And I was so happy to scoop a second position in team retention in Africa and my highest number of non-manager CCs in 2020 was 350 in the month of March. I knew then that I was in fact doing this retention thing so well. Uniting your leaders. During the last months of 2019, I opened a group and named it 2020 Managers. And in this group, I decided to add my runners, the downlines that I would be working closely with and help them get to manager position. In fact, their work ethic had earned them to be in that special group. Part of the reasons why I decided to do this was that I wanted to give them special attention besides the normal groups that we had and I knew that with that treatment, they would definitely win. We call it business by design. Your time is a very special commodity and make sure you use it sparingly and give more of it to the most deserving. The other reason for this chosen and peculiar group 
was to make sure that these downlines unite and form one big group. Over time, these ladies turned from being mere team members to an amazing sisterhood that supported one another, that played together and developed a team culture with a great sense of belonging. We had organized amazing retreats where we would just unwind, relax, get to know each other better and bond. And it did not come as a surprise to me when these nine amazing women got promoted to manager position in 2020. One of the most beautiful moments was when we had one lady lagging behind and these ladies took it upon themselves to pause a bit and give the struggling downline the necessary support. I remember some of them visited her team to give some motivation, others trained her team and she finally built a stronger team that landed her to manager position in December. It was a great moment for the Raune gang, the name they go by. Now, small steps like having a meeting with your leaders after the presentations, home meetings or large events will make your leaders not only feel special, but will give them more belief and strength to go further. And in this COVID era, schedule a Zoom meeting with your managers just to catch up and have fun. The pace of the team is the pace of the leader. Unfortunately, we are in a monkey see, monkey do business. Most of the times, the team you have is an exact replica of you. The pace of your team is determined by your pace. Leading by example will not only motivate your team, but will grow their belief that success is not a normal result, but comes after massive action taking. And thus, as a team leader, you need to do more and always lead from the front. If you are working on reactivating your team, the first step would be to pick up your own recruiting and retailing pace. I remember so well that when we were running some product campaigns, especially the C9 campaign we did, I made sure I worked so hard to be the number one C9 retailer. And I managed to get that with 15 C9 sold during the month of the campaign. Just last week, I trained the current team on the strategies I used to retain lots of C9s in March 2020. I still reap the benefits of being exemplary. Always engage a new team member. One of the mistakes I did in my early years of network marketing was failure to give brand new business partners the basic information and tools at the get-go. It is very crucial to engage your new business partners as soon as he or she receives their first stock. I conduct home launches for my new downlines as soon as they get their first stock and before that launch, I would have given them the assignment of coming up with their 100 name list, invite at least 50 people to the home launch with the hope that at least 10 to 20 people would turn up. And yes, some of my new business partners did the most and brought a good number of invitees to their very first event. And today, I'm very happy that over the years I sacrificed much time and engaged these new people we have now turned into great leaders in our team. Now, dear FBO, do not make that mistake of postponing this very important activity. Give them the winning tips right away. Ready them for success with all possible strategies that you have. Don't hold on to anything. In conclusion, I would say, have a vision so strong and a dream so big such that Confirming to the norms and societal expectations that may halt you from realizing your dream is not an option. In particular, we have this myth in our line of business that successful FBOs are extroverts. Most FBOs would say, I'm an introvert, I'm not an outgoing person, so selling and recruiting or leading a team is a challenge. Did you know that 98% of high performers are introverts? Look at Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page, all introverts. The qualities that distinguish high performers can be summed up by one word, willfulness. They made unpopular decisions because they are not looking at pleasing anybody. Their vision drives them. 
They have an unrelenting focus on creating value. They adapt in the face of new information and setbacks. They are result-oriented. Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. Aristotle said, choice not chance determines your destiny. In short, be intentional, be deliberate, and relenting success will surely be certain. Thank you.